Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Let's see how high I can go. It's not good ladder safety right here. Yep. Oh. <clears throat> that was supposed to happen. Welcome back to the channel. All right, today's video, we are in the equipment barn. It may be hard to tell, but right now I am standing in the Keystone Girls gym. Well, soon to be gym. She has been hounding me for months now to get her gym done. There's just a lot of stuff to do on the property and I have no plans of working out. So I just, I just really don't care that much. So just to put this in perspective, you can kind of see where we're at. That is the large garage door where I park all of the equipment and you can see the loft over there from the previous loft build. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. There used to be a wall right here and there used to be walls and a ceiling and drywall. The whole shooting match it was all here. It was all done. The previous owners used this space as an office and I literally ripped it all down just to reframe it right back in the exact same spot that it was in before. So you may be wondering why I would rip it all out just to replace it all because I had a feeling that whoever built it did a job. And let me tell you, I was correct. First huge mistake I found when I started pulling off all the OSB, I found that they framed all of the two x four walls with three inch finish nails. Yes, like 18 gauge finish nails. So that is what was holding all the framing together, including the ceiling. They actually had a ledger board that went right up there across where the ceiling used to be. They had all the joist hangers screwed to it with drywall screws, inch and a quarter, but they mounted that ledger board to the post with finish nails. The other awful thing that they did is they screwed the joist hangers right over the top of some Romex. And again, they used inch and a quarter drywall screws, only four of them. Obviously, those are not rated for joist hangers. And that's what was holding the entire ceiling up. Not to mention all the gaps and cracks and voids that were not sealed, allowing mice and insects to get in and just infest the inside of these walls. Now, luckily there was no permanent damage made to the original barn structure, which is what we have stripped it down to. So we actually have a pretty good platform to build off of again. Now, going back to when I repaired the gas line to the house, you might remember I have the Wi-Fi that I ran out here. This is a underground rated cat six cable. And I also ran a three quarter inch PEX line in case the original water line ever failed out here. I have a new one already buried underground with a tracer wire going into the house. Now I don't want to, God damn it. Now I don't want to get off track too much. I just want to give you a little bit of an update of where I'm at here with the Keystone Girls gym. But today's video, we're going to be specifically looking at insulating a post frame building, pole barn, whatever you want to call it. Easy, cost effective, damn it. <sighs> Gustrava. I learned that from anger management the movie anger management. So this is gonna be a cheap, easy, and effective way to insulate your post frame building. So the first thing we're gonna need is a great stuff gun. I prefer a great stuff gun. These things are freaking amazing. You just buy the cartridge, they're like 15 bucks. They're way bigger than the can is, and they last way longer. I've literally used this thing for a couple of passes, let it sit for five months, I come back, and I can continue to use that same cartridge. And of course, I will have an Amazon link for this down in the description. And we're going to be using four by eight sheets of this PolyPro. This is an EPS insulation foam board. Don't ask me what EPS stands for. And to be honest, I really don't give a shit anyway. I just know it's gonna insulate it. And this four by eight sheet is an inch and a half thick. You can get it in different thicknesses. The reason I've got inch and a half is because the girts are laid flat and they're obviously an inch and a half thick because they're two by fours. The R value on this doesn't say of course, it only goes up to one inch and the one inch R value is 6.65. So I'd have to assume that the inch and a half is somewhere around seven and a half, maybe. I don't know. I mean, again, I really don't give a shit. It's not that great of an R value. <laughs> Ladybugs. I vacuumed literally probably 2000 stink bugs and ladybugs just in this little space right here. It was freaking disgusting. It was insane. They're all over the floor. I was stepping on them. So we're going to be using my Dewalt table saw to rip these things down to the correct width to fit right in between those girts. All right, enough chit chat. 
Let's get started. I know this sounds like a really easy process, but there are some little things that I do that make it what I feel is a better installation. So let's get started. Yeah. Put on the old handy dandy tool belt. Keystone Girl gets all turned on when I put on my tool belt. If I put on my tool belt, don't be getting uh, all turned on. <laughs> I actually have another tool belt that I use specifically for role play. <laughs> oh, God. You bringing me home more of uh, those chicken nuggets? Those were pretty tasty. Okay, first things first. You may notice that I already have some insulation board on the walls here, but that's not in between the girts. That's actually sandwiched between the girt and the exterior sheet metal. And that insulation board is three quarters of an inch. So I already do have some insulating value here. So between the inch and a half and the three quarter, I'll have two and a quarter inches thick of insulation board. She's gonna be sealed up pretty tight. Naturally, the distances between these girts, 20 and a half, 18, 23, 20 and a half ish, 18 and a half, they're all different. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull some measurements, we'll get to ripping. All right, we are all plugged in and you notice, I have my shop vac hooked up to the table saw and that is gonna help with all of that styrofoam shavings that are gonna go flying everywhere and just kind of float around the barn for two weeks. Uh, this will definitely help. All right, let's get to ripping ass. I mean, it's gonna get loud. Oh, yeah. All right, so we got an extra five inches, you know, that's decent. Now, you can cut the styrofoam board with a razor blade if you want, but the table saw is definitely the way to go. Unplug, I always unplug my power tools when I'm not using them, because I do have daughters and they're young. All right, we have all of our pieces cut, but before we install them, two very important steps that you need to take, or at least I prefer to, is go around, check for nails, any obstructions, anything that might buckle that insulation board out. And I like to use the shop vac, run it across the girts and clean them all up. Make sure you get all the insects out of there. And the other thing I like to do is spray for insects. I use a product called Talstar. I've been using this shit for probably eight or nine years, maybe 10 years. This stuff works amazing. It's like home defense, the stuff that you buy at Home Depot. It's like that on steroids. It's definitely commercial grade stuff. It's very potent. Make sure you read all safety precautions, but it does a great job with keeping insects away. So I actually already did this. I went around and I sprayed the out of all the wood, all of those tight little crevices, anywhere where insects may come in. You might say it's a little bit of an insurance policy because this particular barn is almost 20 years old. So it's pretty well established and the bugs know where it's at. All right, so we've got all of our cut pieces here. So 19 and three quarter, we are going to, oh, that goes up here. I'm gonna say that doesn't look right. Slide this behind, slide it over. Ow, damn it. Oh yeah, that baby's in there. Look at that baby right there. Yeah, buddy. All right, so I'm gonna get all these slid in here real quick. Pretty easy to do. More little guy up top. Another thing you're gonna need is a loose fine tooth hacksaw blade. You'll see why I use this in a little bit, but it works pretty well for any fine tuning on the styrofoam. All right, that is step one. We got all of the insulation board cut to size. We got it half ass in the wall. Now I personally like to leave anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch on both the top and bottom uh, for a couple reasons. One is because sometimes those girts don't always run perfectly parallel. They kind of deviate a little bit, so it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. And number two, because I like to fill those voids with great stuff, which gives me a super tight seal, because that's what I'm looking for. Since the R value isn't that high on this, if you can actually seal the building and keep from any air from actually leaking and transferring into the building, 
that's going to help you tremendously. What I'm going to do is get all my gaps even. I'm gonna kind of start in the middle and I'm just going to repurpose some of these drywall screws that I pulled out when I did all this demo work. And I'm just gonna kind of toenail these things in there just to hold this in place in a couple of spots. That will keep it pushed in tight against the wall and it'll keep my gaps the same. And that will allow me to get that great stuff in. Once the great stuff's in, honestly, I could leave them there or I can go ahead and pull them all back out. All right, so I'm gonna go around and toenail all these things in, get all my gaps right, and I'll show you the next step. All right, now for the fun part, the great stuff. Now, I apologize for the lighting. I have no lights in this barn right now because I've literally ripped out all of the electrical. Okay, so I mentioned I left a quarter inch gap. Obviously, we're gonna go around and fill all this with great stuff. We'll let it kind of splooge out of there. May not be the best word for that. And then we're gonna use that fine tooth hacksaw blade because it's flexible, it's very easy to use for doing this. We'll go through and we'll cut off all the excess. But I wanna show you how much control you have with one of these great stuff guns. Pretty impressive. I wanna stop, I stop, nothing else is coming out. I wanna start, start right back up again. All right, I just got back from Lowe's. I was able to pick up some more of this PolyPro insulation board. I got two bunks. Uh, there's 13 in a bunk, and these things are, hold on, let me tell you, only $10.27 a piece. Now, if you've ever looked into pricing on insulation board, the pink board, that stuff's probably three times the price of this stuff at inch and a half thick. So that is why I chose to go with the PolyPro. To me, it wasn't so much about the R value, but just having any kind of a styrofoam with a foil face on there and keep from any air transferring into the building. So this should be enough or real close to it to get the entire rest of this barn done, which we're not gonna do all that in this video. We're just gonna do this wall here. And you can see I already have the middle section up and everything cut. So we're about to move on to the next step. All right, one thing I like to do when I'm taking one piece of this insulation board and running it into the other one inside of this same girt is just throw a line of great stuff on top and bottom and then one right down the seam here. You don't need a lot, just enough so that you can smush them together and get a nice tight seal. All right, I got the other two bays all insulated and foamed, waiting for those to dry while I'm waiting for that. This bay is good and hard. So now we're going to be using the loose hacksaw blade. This is just a normal fine tooth hacksaw blade. And I find that this works really well because it's flexible and uh, you'll see why. So basically all we're gonna do is just cut into that foam, lay it nice and flush against the wall, just like that. And you can basically just zip right across pretty damn quick. And that's it, nice and smooth. Let me get you a close up on this. It's actually pretty damn satisfying. You can see the blade is laying nice and flat and you can see that's why I like a little bit of flex in it because I can hold my hand away from the wall. And then we're just gonna
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this wall. Should only take like five to 10 minutes to do it. Then we could talk about the very last step and what the cost is per square foot or per eight foot bay on your typical post frame building. All right, all of the insulation foam board is in and it really didn't take that long to do. It is somewhat time consuming, great stuffing all of those joints, but in the end, I think it is a pretty good installation and everything is sealed up tighter than a cricket's butthole. Probably wasn't the most appropriate way to phrase that, but that's pretty tight. Now, most pole barns are set up where the posts are on eight foot centers. Sometimes they span a little bit wider, but typically eight foot spans are the most common. My ceiling height is 10 foot high and it takes two and a half of those insulation board four by eight sheets to do one bay. Being that they're 10, 27 a piece, we'll just call it 11 bucks a piece. So we're looking at somewhere in the 11, 11, 22. We'll just call it like 30 bucks a bay for the insulation board. Now I left my gaps at like a quarter of an inch around the girts so I could fill that area with great stuff. If you could tighten those gaps up a little bit closer to an eighth or maybe three sixteenths, you can definitely get away with not using as much foam as I did. But I was basically using one cartridge of this great stuff for each bay. For the most part, I was getting about one and a half bays out of one can, but just for cost reasons, we'll just call it one can. And these are 15 bucks for one of these cans. So now we're looking at $45 per eight foot bay with a 10 foot ceiling. Obviously there's a million different configurations as far as barn sizes and heights and everything else. So if you wanna calculate that square footage yourself, go ahead. And I would say for each bay, it took me about an hour to an hour and a half to get the insulation board in, get it great stuffed, come back, trim all the great stuff off, clean everything up. Really doesn't take that long, it's pretty quick. Now, as far as the sheeting or wall covering that you wanna put on this, obviously there's tons of options. You can put sheet metal on there. In my situation, I'm going to put 7 16 OSB on there like I did in some of the other sections of the pole barn. Then I'm gonna come back later and I'm gonna paint that. It's just the pole barn, doesn't need to look like the inside of my house. Now the sheet metal would look good, but sometimes it's hard to mount shelving and brackets and everything else on the sheet metal. That's why I like the OSB. Now being that this section is in the Keystone Girls gym, my plan, is to use some of the OSB that I pulled down that's got some holes in it and a little bit of damage. I'm gonna actually use that to sheet over all of this insulation board. And then I'm going to frame another two by four wall inside of that to match the face of these four by six treated posts. I'm gonna insulate that two by four framed wall and then I'm going to drywall over that. So this gym area is going to be insulated really, really well. And between this wall and the new framed wall, there will be a slight gap so it will be able to breathe. That is important. Obviously, you don't want to trap moisture in there because it will obviously start to mold over time. The next video that you're going to see in this barn is going to be framing out this entire gym and I am going to have the Keystone Girl helping me on that project. So if you want to see her and I work together, that'll be interesting. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. Now, overall, there's about 273 different ways to insulate your post frame building. This is just one of them. I'm not saying that it's the best way to do it, so it all comes down to your personal preference and what you intend on using your building for. In my opinion, this is a great way to insulate your pole barn in most situations, whether you plan on heating it all the time or if you just have the occasional project and you just wanna throw a torpedo heater in here, I think that this is plenty sufficient. I mean, it seals this thing up. There is no cold air coming into this barn unless it's through the overhead doors, windows, etc. Anyways, that's gonna wrap this one up. This is just one way to do it. Do your research, find what works best for you. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Gideon. Stupid. Stupid. What the hell is going on? We have chiggers? Jeez. Yeah. You got a bulge there. <laughs> yep, buddy. <laughs>